Right now, Samsung is one of the largest smartphone manufacturers in the world. Not only that, they are the oldest brand aside from Apple who is still alive and successful unlike HTC and LG. Within just 13 years, their global smartphone market share went from 6% to 26% according to StatCounter. This 13 years of journey wasn't the smoothest one for Samsung. In fact, at one point, Samsung's Android skin TouchWiz was holding back their phones. People really hated TouchWiz. But fast forward to 2023, Samsung's One UI is now considered one of the best Android UI. Even I know some people who bought Samsung just for One UI. So what exactly happened? How One UI changed Samsung's reputation from worst to best? Let's explore the journey of transformation from TouchWiz to One UI and also hit the subscribe button. If you are a long time or past Samsung user, you might remember TouchWiz which used to be Samsung's custom Android UI. But the thing you might not know is that TouchWiz wasn't initially made for Android. The first phone featuring TouchWiz was actually a feature phone Samsung F480 from 2008. Around the same time, we also saw Samsung i900 Omnia, a Windows Mobile 6.1 phone and Samsung i8910 Omnia HD, a Symbian OS running phone featuring TouchWiz. TouchWiz wasn't just its Android skin, rather it was the universal UI of Samsung phones. TouchWiz didn't come to Android until 2010 with the launch of Galaxy S. At the same year, they also released their own Bada OS, which also had TouchWiz. Man, I have never seen any UI this diverse to OS before. Although Bada OS flopped, TouchWiz lived on for coming years. With Galaxy S3's launch, Samsung updated their TouchWiz UI with Nature Theme, or as they call it, Design for Humans. Remember the ripple effect of lock screen or the annoying water drop sound with every touch? In addition to this design, Samsung started adding bloatwares like their messaging app Chat On, Galaxy Store, Dropbox, etc. This heavy UI compromised the performance of the phone. It got even worse with the launch of S4 by the addition of gimmicks like Air Gesture, S-Beam, making the experience even worse. Due to this heavy UI, their phones, especially the budget ones, used to get hanged a lot. So much so, at one point, some people didn't want to buy Samsung phones just for this hang issue. So the heavy clunky UI added with the instability problems resulted in creating a hate for touchways. One of my friends who used to use Galaxy S4 was pissed off by the terrible experience of TouchWitch, which includes all the aforementioned problems. After that, he switched to iPhone 6, which according to him gave way better experience despite being just only a year younger than S4. So eventually, with the launch of S5, Samsung started to reuse their gimmicky features. By the time S7 launched, TouchWiz looked a lot better than it used to. In 2017, Samsung rebranded the TouchWiz UX to Samsung Experience UI. By that time, Samsung's UI had gotten a lot better, like a more modern intuitive UI. I actually love the icons of this UI, but still they had a huge problem with updates. Like Samsung phones used to get late updates and update period was only 2 years. But it would apply if you had their flagship S or Note series phones. If you own their budget J series phones then good luck getting even security updates. Even mid-range Xiaomi phones used to get new features with updates. Plus Samsung phones had good hardware but the Samsung Experience UI still didn't give the most polished experience like Oxygen OS. So after years of complaint, finally in December 2018, Samsung scrapped their old UI and launched a new UI called One UI. 
One UI started a new chapter for Samsung. This UI was designed with bigger phones in mind, so everything was accessible with one hand. Not only that, Samsung finally made their UI more optimized for the even low-end phones. Instead of gimmicky features, Samsung added even more useful features including integration with Windows PC via phone link app like Apple ecosystem. But the biggest change in my opinion was in software update. Gone are the days of late updates. Now they give updates as soon as Google release. For instance, last year Pixel 6 got Android 13 in August and S21 series got it at November. For some comparison, the 2016 S7 series got their Android 8 update 5 months after Google's release. The story doesn't end here. They took it a step further by extending the software update period from 2 years to 4 years of Android version update, which is currently the highest in the industry. Even Google it still provides only 3 years of Android update. Even more surprising is that they even give at least 2 years of software update in their mid-range phones and even entry-level phones. Samsung's sub-$200 phone Samsung Galaxy A3, which was released at 2021 with Android 11, has already got Android 13 this January. Damn, Samsung has changed a lot since their touchwish days. Plus, they deliver really stable updates unlike Xiaomi or OnePlus, who in last few years messed up their updates with bugs causing problems ranging from unstable performance issues to disabling some features to even breaking some phones. Bravo Samsung for such a great job. Although One UI is great, but it's not flawless. One of the improvements they can do is by reducing the amount of bloatware or at least give the options for uninstalling. It was interesting to see Samsung's journey from turning their weak point to their strong point. Other brands should learn these things from Samsung. On personal note, the first ever smartphone I have ever used was the Galaxy S Duos 2. I also used the Galaxy S as my daily driver for some time and even made a video about it on this channel few years back. I have seen Samsung evolve from those days of hang lag to one of the best UI. If you have ever used a Samsung phone, share your fond memories or should I say terrible memories in the comments below. That wraps up, thanks for watching, like and share this video and also subscribe this channel. Until next time, bye.